This is five on your side at four, focused on you. Right now, a renewed push to support victims of radioactive waste. Today, advocates and lawmakers rallied in North St. Louis County to get victims compensated. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brent Solomon. And I'm Kay Quinn. Congresswoman Cori Bush held a news conference today calling for the extension and expansion of the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act. Five on your side's Justina Coronel has been closely following RICA. She joins us now with more on what happened at today's rally. Justina. Brent and Kay, the message was clear. The time to act is now. If passed, the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, also known as RICA, would expand and extend to include Missouri and the residents impacted by radioactive waste, which is connected to the first atomic bomb. While RICA passed the Senate in early March, it was left out of a federal appropriations bill two weeks later. And now the House is going back to session and Congresswoman Cori Bush is asking for the House Speaker to bring RICA down to the floor for a vote. Right now, costs have been a concern, but Bush said, what is the cost for a human life? Now, this news conference had back to back speakers with powerful testimonies from multiple people impacted. Earlier today, I spoke to one man who's lived near Coldwater Creek for 40 years. His wife died last year to stage four lung cancer. The people weren't telling us the truth and letting people know, you know, we were exposed to that. And she wants other, she wanted other people to know that, hey, there's, there's a problem here and this problem needs to be fixed so that other people are not suffering like I am. Now, RICA expires on June 7th. And while that's a few months away, Bush points out they'll only have 28 days in this session for the House to pass RICA. All right, thank you, Justina. Some breaking news at four. We just learned about a deadly crash in St. Louis County. Officers say they responded to South Broadway and Ripa, where two construction workers were struck just after 1030 this morning. Police say the driver of a Cadillac lost control and hit two people as they were working on the front of a building. One of the workers was killed. The other was taken to the hospital, but is expected to survive. The driver was also taken to the hospital. We have a crew on scene. We will update you with more information on Five on Your Side at 5 and 6. Well, St. Clair Catholic School in O'Fallon, Illinois, had to close today following a gas leak yesterday. 17 students had to go to the hospital. We're told they are all back home now. Crews traced the gas leak to a furnace on the roof of the school there. A repair company was on site today. Now, Ameren says the issue was carbon monoxide, but the school and the fire department say it was natural gas. Today, an earthquake struck the East Coast, sending tremors across the city. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the 4.8 quake was centered in New Jersey. The tremor could be felt from Maryland to New York to Maine. Places like the U.N. headquarters in New York shook and the tremor disrupted morning activities in the nation's largest city. At first I actually thought it was uh, construction making a mistake or something, you know, hitting the infrastructure. And then like about 30 seconds later, once it stopped, that's when I realized, oh wait, this is actually, this is actually pretty legit. This is a real earthquake. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake is not considered major. New York City's mayor says no injuries or impacts to infrastructure have been reported. All right, closer to home now. Many of us saw some frost this morning. Now we're looking ahead to the weekend. Lots of sports happening. Fingers crossed for some spring warm weather. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> weather first, Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell here with the Weather First forecast. And um, if you have some plants outside, a lot of people mm. do, Scott, maybe want to bring them yeah. in. 18, 18 hours we got to get through. Okay. Just the next 18 hours. And really, as we go into tomorrow morning, that's when we have the better chances for widespread frost across much of the area and another freeze possible east of St. Louis. So tomorrow morning, going to be a weather alert morning for you as we do have frost advisories now for the metro area for the overnight hours tonight into early tomorrow. We still have a few clouds around. They are continuing to break up farther west of St. Louis, east of St. Louis, a bit more in the way of cloud cover, but overall this whole system's pushing away. As it's doing so, that means the coldest of air, which last night was west of St. Louis, will shift to the east. Notice the low temperature over in Trenton early this morning was 39 degrees. Shiloh was 36. So was Smithton. Waterloo at 35. But then you go to the west. Baldwin was down to 27, 28 in Union, 30 in Wentzville. And the winds diminished enough so that we did see some frost even in parts of the outlying metro area. Right now, most of us are in the 50s, still only in the 40s east of St. Louis. Here's your frost and freeze areas tonight. 
the frost advisory. Most of our Missouri counties, including the metro, and then going to the east, it's a freeze warning. Here's the deal. Temperatures tonight are going to drop to around or below freezing east of St. Louis. We'll have some frost around. So if you recently planted something, especially those summer annuals, saw somebody buying impatience today. Oh. Don't plant them tonight or tomorrow. They will die at the first hint of frost. Anything that's out there that's already been blood, uh, blooming and budding out most likely can tolerate it, but you might want to cover up those hostas and daylilies that are already springing forth, Kay. Let them learn! Let them learn! Let them Changes on the Francis Howell School Board. In December, some parents from the district protested after the board voted to remove some black studies from the high school curriculum. The dropped courses came under scrutiny due to some social justice standards developed by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And the school board approved restructured black studies courses for the coming school year. Those courses do not include the standards school leaders scrutinized. The controversy over those courses came just ahead of a school board election. Tuesday, two progressive candidates, Carol Owens and Stephen Blair, took two of the open seats on the board. On this week's episode of The Record, political editor Mark Maxwell speaks with both of those newly elected board members. Blair says this election signals a shift in how the community views the board's responsibilities. There's a number of people who were not involved in politics before this election who decided to step up and say whatever had been happening was too much. They wanted uh, more of a focus on education versus cultural war issues. Talking about bathrooms, talking about uh, the letters like CRT or DEI, or, or anything else along those lines. Mark also speaks to Carolee Owens about her vision for the school board. You can catch both of those interviews on The Record with Mark Maxwell. It airs Sunday night right after Sports Plus. Mercy Hospital wants to build a new location in Wentzville. Leaders are eyeing a spot near I-64 and 70. They say the new location would help with the growing population in that area. It would have 75 beds serving St. Charles, Lincoln, and Warren counties. It would take about four years to finish the hospital. Making social media safer for kids. Illinois lawmakers are considering a measure named for a teen who bought drugs on Snapchat and died. Could one of your favorite baseball players become one of your favorite musicians? The Cardinal, whose debut album just dropped. Just three days until the Great American Eclipse, how the celestial event is breathing new life into a tiny Illinois town.